Um, next up, we have <laughs> Pastor Fasto. <laughs> How'd I do? <laughs> Did I say it right this time? <laughs> you have from the very beginning because oh, you know God. what? You're a princess of it's God. I like goal. I like the it's way you express. It's my goal today <laughs> to get oh, that right. Oh my my! <laughs> I should change my name just to Amigo. Amigo means friend in Spanish. Hey, amigo. <laughs> there you go. Your All amigo. Right. Well, I'm going to give you the floor right now because you have an amazing message from the Lord and I can't wait to hear it. I'm so excited. Thank you. And Thank I you for your enthusiasm. Thank you because it is contagious. The joy of oh. the Lord is something that just bubbles and as it bubbles, it cannot give the fervency of God's powerful love. God it is my so joy good. to be with all of you today <laughs> because uh, I've been now uh, following the Lord Jesus Christ for over 43 years. I met the Lord at the Jesus Movement back in the mm -hmm. 70s. I was a hippie, long hair. You have to use your imagination for this. And nevertheless, my heart was always seeking for truth, seeking for true love. And that's how Jesus came and met me mm -hmm. in my teenage years. And since then, my life was transformed completely and continues to be transformed day by day. Uh, two words, conform or transform. Many of us tend to conform to this world, conform to our culture, conform to our circumstances. But God says, do not be conformed to this world, but be it transformed. And that is the, the, the word that really I would like to share with all of you. Transformation comes by the, the fixing of our eyes in the person of Jesus Christ. As we follow him, we will never be the same. Never, never, never. And that's really the story that all of us as Christians can tell the whole world. People need to hear the proclamation and then see the demonstration. Because sometimes talk, talk, talk is, is cheap, they say. But to understand the power of his word that comes alive, the Rema word, that's what makes the difference. Within the Jesus movement, I experienced the power of love by the power of his word and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that comes upon us, the Holy Spirit that lives in us, the Holy Spirit that is always with us, never leave us. So it is a joy to, to hear everyone's testimony through their songs, their music, your life story, because all of you guys are young. Red and I are young as well, but not as young as you too. And it is always an important fact to recognize that experience and, and, and the, the abundance of a Christian life doesn't have to measure by the longevity as far as uh, you're old or you're young, but rather in the actual true experience of meeting God, having that encounter with God and walking with it on a daily basis. It's not just a, a temporal experience, but it's a lifelong experience to walk with God, to fall in love with him. The more we know him, the more we love him. And the more we love him, the more we want to follow him and serve him and be faithful to him. Faithful. That's the word I would like to start with. Because I think about how today, uh, still going and coming out of this terrific pandemic that we have experienced, unprecedented in many ways for us who have lived here for five centuries and more. And for you younger people, that I believe that has been astounding experience and also a challenging, but also an exciting opportunity to, to walk with Jesus and see the impossibilities and to see the miracle working power of our mighty God. So it is exciting to share with you today about vision. The vision that comes from God is not my vision. Our vision is God's vision for us to live by faith for us to believe with all of our hearts to never give up, never, never give up, but continue to press on and also to remember the definition of faith. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 tells, tells us is the, is, the, is the essence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So for us to understand that faith is that logical, faith is not something that you can buy or even ask for, but rather faith is given to us as a gift and then it's developed as the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and when we talk about being young and having dreams and visions and desires and plans the question should we always ask what is your vision 
as far as what God is revealing to you. What do you want to do? I hear a young entrepreneurs having a big vision as to wanting to do this, wanting to go there, wanting to experience this, and many more things. Well, there's no limit. The sky is the limit, they say. But more than that, just whatever God's will for our lives is. But he wants us to experience it in a supernatural way. So when we talk about faith, why is it so important? What is it? What is so important about faith? Faith, talking about a solid foundation, talks about what is true, talks about the establishment of an emotional mindset, spiritual reality in our lives that allows us to live in certainty in a world full of uncertainties, to be rooted and grounded in the truth who Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So it is the person, it is the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So for us to be filled with faith means that we are completely surrendered to God, to his will, to his purpose, and to his love in our heart. Having that confidence, not in us. Having that dependence, not on the circumstances, but having our confidence in God and having our full dependence on him. That should be our foundation of our faith. Many people say, oh, you have so much faith. Oh, they have so much faith. It's not about us. It's not about them. It's about who God is. And as we just choose to fall at his feet and say, Lord, here I am. Use this vessel for your glory and your honor. Everything for the glory of God. Interesting. The Hebrew word for faith, I'm going to spell it, is E-M-U-N-A. Emunem. Emunem. And the root word is emun, E-M-U-N, which equals us to amen, amen, A-W dash men. The more faith you have, the more steadfast and steady you become. How important that is. I was 17 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord. And people will say to me, you are so young to be a Christian. You are so young to, to try to live a holy life, a consecrated life and not to do the wild things that usually young people do. But I lived a wild life in the Lord, experiencing the adventure of faith, looking at the impossibilities as something that I will smile at because I know that my God, my God is able. My God, your God, our God is able to do exceedingly above all we can ask or think, meaning imagine, imagination. We were made at the image of God. And therefore, God has given us that gift to be able to imagine, to be able to know that there is no limitations for God. The more faith you have, the more steadfast and steady you become, the stronger you become. We live in an age where we see a lot of people who call themselves Christians have a weak faith. I have a weak faith. But I don't want to stay here. So it's not about pointing fingers. You are weak. You are strong. You are better or he's worse. No, no, no. Let's be realistic and realize this is where I'm at. But I don't want to stay here. I want to move forward. I want to go higher. I want to go to the next level. And I am able because God is going to make me able. able. It's not about anything that we try to do on our own. It's by surrendering our life to him. Faith is the evidence of people hoped for. Evidence is the security, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The more faith you have, the more steadfast. One important way to remember each other to steadfast is to steady on. Keep going, keep moving, steady on. Don't deviate to the right or to the left. Stay the course. Stay the course. Very important. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. And for somebody my age, you begin to think, oh, how old are you? Are you, are you ready to retire? And many times people may say, yeah, I will retire. I will change my, my pace on things, but maybe the intensity of things. But I want to keep doing what I've been called to do until that last breath that God will allow me to have in this earth and then continue to praise him there with him in glory. But interesting to know that instead of retiring, we need to refire. No, I'm not going to retire. I'm going to refire in the fire of the Holy Spirit, in the fire with the F of fire and of faith. 
faith, to believe, to trust, to obey. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23 says, The Lord is loving kindness, indeed never cease, for his compassion never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And here's the Hebrew word that I mentioned, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, E-M-U-N-A-H. And interesting because as we realize the word Amani, removing the E, the root word is Amen, A-W-Men, or faith. The word faith is Amen. So Amen gives us our word, amen, in Spanish, amen, amen. To agree or to say yes, so be it, surely, secure. When God says amen, means it will be done. When we say amen at the end of our prayer, means so be it. Let God's will be done and determined. In Psalms 41, verse 13 says, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Oh, God's faithfulness will make it become, will make it be. Yes, because God is good and God is faithful. Many times we find people having uh, issues with their minds, their thought life. And as you know, that what you think is what you will bring down into your heart, to what you feel, and then to what you do, your action. So thoughts, emotions, and actions kind of come together, it becomes the attitude. What is your attitude? An attitude is connected with perspective, your vision. What do you see? What do you perceive? And therefore, I would like to leave you with some encouraging words today. Keep dreaming, all of you, whoever you are, whatever age you may be at, you are single, married, separate, divorce, or whatever your status may be, keep dreaming till time comes for you to leave this world. Keep dreaming until the end. Age is never a valid excuse. Oh, I'm too old to be dreaming. No, you are not. Oh, I'm too young. To... No, no, you are not too young. Age is never a valid excuse. Believe God for miracles. We serve a God of miracles. And as you enlarge your prayer circles, pray with people, pray for people, have people pray for you. Don't be shy about it. You have a lion in your heart that is ready to roar and go ahead and praise the Lord Jesus Christ with everything that you say, your perspective, your attitude, your actions, because God is at work in our life. It's important to learn to, to die to ourselves. Jesus said, whoever wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. We need to learn to die at the altar of logic. We want to make logic of everything. And God says, hey, look at the scripture, look at the miracles in the desert. Look in the wilderness, L look at the New Testament in the book of Acts, look at the Christians today, those who are able to believe and, and, and dare to do that which God is calling them to do, not depending on circumstances or, or our human resources, but God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Honoring God, raw dependence on him, raw dependence on him. Faith is willingness to look foolish to the eyes of the people but i don't care what people may think i care about what god is going to say did i obey did i follow his instructions obedience is a big word throughout the scriptures you see those men and women of god whom god used that's the common denominator they were obedient they obeyed what god said they did what God told them to do. What an epic miracles that we read in the wilderness, as well as in the beginning of the church age. But today, God wants to do miracles as well. So many bi uh, biblical examples that results in, in speaking as to what people may not understand. But you don't have to try to make people understand because even God says, don't try to understand me. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways but his word will never come back boy.
So let us start, step out of the boat like, like, like Jesus challenged the apostle Peter. Pray big. Pray big. If you're going to pray, pray big. Pray hard. Don't give up. Cry out. Supplications, petitions, thanksgiving, adoration, prostrated before God. God's will and God's way is what we need to seek with all of our hearts. In Luke chapter 6 talks about pleading and the greatest time that you can ever have in your relationship with God in that encounter with God is to pray. And as you pray, you see the impossibility become a reality. But let's remember that persistent widow that Jesus spoke about. Again, the circle maker, the circle, the promise, desperate measures bring about desperate response because there's bold prayers that need to happen. Oh, yes, you look at throughout the scriptures, those who pray with boldness, with faith, with humility, uh, persistent effort. Uh, many times we, we tend to believe that those people that are gifted, they don't need to practice. They can just stand and just, just play the instrument like, like if they've been playing all their lives. But in fact, there is a particular detail about whatever God is giving you, you need to cultivate on it. There is the, the, the story about a violinist, a violinist story, a world-class concert level violinist. And then one that is not a professional standard. What is the difference? There was a study made. Those who are a world-class concert level musicians and those who are non-professional standard vary in the fact of how much time they spend in their practice. And it is already given. You can look it up in the computer and find out the details of this. But 10,000 hours is required for someone to become proficient on something. Now, everybody can do that. It just takes determination and persistent effort. But many times we don't want to pay the price. If it doesn't cost you anything, it's because it may not value much to you. You must value that which God is giving you, a talent, a gift, an opportunity, an open door. Don't neglect the gift that has been given to you. Find the fire that God, has been, that God has poured into your life. So do not lose heart because that's what tends to happen. We lose heart. We, we are impatient and we need to continue to persevere. Don't lose vision. Don't lose faith. Reactivate your faith. If this is the opportunity right now by the songs being played, by this opportunity to praise God one concert at a time, my dear brother Red, bringing us all together from different backgrounds and different age groups from different geographically locations, God has put it together and many others can join in. Many others will see and watch and hear and feel the message of the Lord given because God cares for you. He loves you. He wants you to, to do not lose heart. He wants you to do not lose vision. He wants you to do not lose faith, but rather reactivate your faith. Rather dream for a resurrected calling in your life that you have put aside or forgot about it. A miracle to believe again, to have the newness, the freshness of God in your life. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't lose that heart that will say, Lord, I believe, I believe, I still believe. Step of faith into the world of the unprecedented trials. Many times where I experienced so many trials in my life, I don't have the time to, to spell them to you, but I have gone through so many heartaches. I gone through so many hardships in my life. But every time I thought, well, this is the storm that was going to hit me and test me. Faith is like gold. It is purified in fire. But then after this huge, humongous tribulation that would come my way, and I was able to steadfast and overcome and continue to go afloat and go forward, thinking like, oof, finally, I made it. You know, like, I'm going to get a break. No, there is another one coming, another storm bigger than the one before. Why? Because God is building you up, making you stronger helping you to become more and more efficient in what God has for you because God wants us to live by faith. And the actual truth is that 
the scripture tells us that those who will live a godly life will suffer persecution. And if Christ our Lord suffers so much, what do we expect being followers of Jesus? But the more we suffer, the school of suffering brings us to that place of oneness with the Lord. Paul the Apostle said, that would used to be a great gain to me now. I consider it but nothing of any value. Why? So that I may know him. And may, I may know, I, I may be, a, a have fellowship with his sufferings and experience the power of his resurrection. Three things. Why, that, why you must reevaluate your, your life and what is important to you. Paul says, that which used to value a lot to me is not of value anymore. Why? I want to know him. I want to experience the power, the resurrected power of God in my life. And also, I want to be in fellowship with the sufferings of Christ. Suffering purifies that longing and that waiting period. Worship him while you wait. Believe and continue to believe and pray while you wait. The answer will come. Do not lose heart. Don't stop praying. Step of faith into that world of unprecedented trials. Blessed is the man who is not offended by what happens to him. A fresh encounter with a loving God in light of his resurrection. Remember the empty tomb. Remember the empty tomb. Remember what transcends from that. Because he lives, we shall see tomorrow. So I am not whom I used to be, and I'm not who I'm going to be. And the same goes for you. Let us continue to move forward, to go higher, to have faith upon faith, and to believe and to believe and to believe more and more because God is faithful and he will never fail. His mercies endure forever. Oh, there is a mantra that says, God won't answer the prayers that we don't pray. God will not answer the prayers that we don't pray. So let us bring our hearts into that conviction and that commitment. I'm going to be a man of prayer. I'm going to be a woman of prayer. Being young, being older, being an elder, it doesn't matter. We need to pray. So hold on to your hope, even now, even, even in a greater way, and allow God to move in your heart. Finally, in 1 John, John the Apostle said that these things I have written to you that your joy may be complete. And that is so powerful. As you have that encounter with the Lord, then your joy, the communion with God the Father in the Lord Jesus Christ and with one another brings joy, that joy of fellowship. But then also in chapter 2 says, uh, these things I have written to you that you may not sin. But for anyone who has sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. So it is a relationship with God that gives us joy, that is full and complete. It, it is the fellowship of God that gives us, through faith, the power to overcome sin. And finally, in chapter 5, verse 13, John writes, saying, These things I have written to you that you who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ may know that you have eternal life and that you will continue to believe in him. So may the Lord richly bless you and fill your heart with faith, with love, with a sense of anticipation for all the things that he has for you. I love you with the love of the Lord and the love of the Lord is real. And no matter how time transcends, more and more, he becomes more real to you. So it is a joy to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity to share just these little nuts that I have learned nuggets that I have lived and I will continue to live for the glory of God. I am married to my beautiful wife for over 33 years. I have three adult children. I have seven grandchildren and more to come. And I'm excited to serve the Lord for the last 43 years of my life. Church planting, coming alongside of churches, developing leadership, mentoring, coaching, praying for people, expecting the unexpected because we serve a mighty God. Thank you. May the Lord richly bless you. Again, my name is Fausto Fluker, and I just happen to be a servant of the Lord that God saved at the Jesus People Movement in the 70s. So you can start counting. I'm not that old, but not that young either, but it doesn't matter. Let us believe and trust in him. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.